So when we talk about surgery, we can't talk about surgery without talking about complications. So what are some complications of microdiscs and laminectomies? Well, dural tears are, are probably the number one thing that we see. Those happen. Uh, if you're not getting dural tears, you're probably not doing enough spine surgery. So it happens. It's part of the job. We can usually repair them during surgery. So I kind of tell people these are something that we see. It's not all that common, but it does happen. It usually doesn't cause you any problem. Unfortunately, when it does cause you a problem, it's usually horrible and very difficult to fix. So it's the bane of all of our existence doing these surgeries to get these, but we try to do our best to avoid them at all costs. Uh, violation of the ALL is very, very rare, 1.6 to 17 out of 10,000 cases. However, it has a very high mortality rate of 50%, mainly due to vascular injury. You can get a retroperitoneal bleed from this. And this just comes with, with taking your time and not being super aggressive with your discectomy, you know, kind of working where the disc herniation is, not going too far in anterior. Wrong level surgery is certainly something that should never happen, but unfortunately it does from time to time. So we have to sort of take ownership of that and, and do our best to avoid it. The way that I've, you know, come to practice is you know, there's never such thing as too many x-rays. You can just keep taking pictures until you're totally convinced that you're in the right spot. I'll even go as far as sometimes I've done the laminotomy, I'm down to the disc and I'll say, let's just get a picture to make sure we're at the right spot here and we're, we're doing what we need to do. Persistent symptoms is probably the most common quote unquote complication, not necessarily a complication. This is where I'll put my plug in for spinal cord stimulation. A lot of people who end up with spinal cord stimulation are falling into this category of post laminectomy syndrome or failed back surgery syndrome. And, you know, why is that? What is the problem? Why do they continue to have pain? If you get scans on these folks, you know, they all have had this big disc herniation. You go in, you do surgery, disc herniation's gone. They still have pain. You know, why? Then that's really the, the million dollar question. My thought has always been that this is probably some underlying damage to the nerve that hasn't really been able to be repaired. I think if you look, a lot of times they've had long standing compression and that can certainly lead to that, but that's a little bit of a mystery as to why we get these persistent symptoms sometimes. And that's where, you know, somebody like myself, who is a, a big proponent of spinal cord stimulation can get involved and try to help people with a functional procedure to try to block pain signals, as opposed to this kind of procedure, which I consider more of a structural surgery to relieve compression and hopefully ultimately relieve their symptoms. Infection is the risk of any surgery we do is about a half a percent risk with something like this. It usually occurs in the first month after surgery, uh, but that's fairly uncommon. A lot of times these are superficial infections, can be treated with antibiotics alone. There's no hardware involved here. Hardware is what the big problem is with infections because if in bacteria get on hardware, that's really hard to get off. They form a biofilm and it's very difficult to treat. And then in parentheses here, recurrence of symptoms, not really a complication, but something that we definitely see usually occurs within the first year. Sometimes it's secondary to scar formation. And if you're talking about multiple recurrences, maybe needing to talk about a fusion to really just take the whole disc out and ultimately fuse together with an inner body. People will do that through anterior lumbar approaches. People will do that from posterior approaches. Lateral approaches are very common now. To, to do inner body fusions. The, the benefit to doing an anterior or a lateral fusion after you do a microdiscectomy is you're avoiding that scar tissue that is inevitably been created by doing that uh, initial surgery. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.